sing one more song before we have our word on this morning, on this afternoon. Hallelujah. You're worthy of our worship, Lord God, worthy of our praise. Thank you, Lord. upon your love, Lord God, for it's a firm foundation, an unshakable foundation, Hallelujah. and we will not be shaken once we stand on the rock. Yes, God. Hallelujah, we say, and I will build my life upon your love. It is a firm foundation, and I will Put my 
trust I will put my trust in you alone and I will not be so holy holy there is no one like you there is none beside you open up open up my eyes in wonder As long as we build our life upon your love, upon your word, and trust in you faithfully, surely, Lord God. As your word says, for, for John 3, verse 16, for you love the world, that whosoever believes in you will not perish, but have everlasting life, Lord God. So we believe in you in this morning. We believe in your word. We believe in your love on this morning, Lord God, that we will not perish, Lord God, and we will see your glory here in the land of the living. We will not be shaken, Lord God, by news. We will not be shaken by the storms of this life. We will stand on the rock. We will stand on the solid ground that is eternal. Our eternal Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We will stand upon your love, Lord God. And we will have the victory upon victory in this life and the one after, Lord God. Because of who you are and because you live and thrive in us. We thank you for this moment of worship, Lord God. We thank you for your word. We thank you, Lord God, for all that you've done for us and all that you will do for us. We are assured in you. We are, are resting in your love, resting in your more than capable arms, Lord God. Continue to lead us as only you can. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 We just thank God for everybody here. Can I give God a hand clap of praise, all of you that are here, those of you watching us online. Give us a hand, clap of praise. We thank you for your presence, and we thank you. Anybody here for first or second time, please stand so we can acknowledge you in the audience, first or second time. Come on, don't be shy to our English uh, rooted service. Come on, stand up, stand up, stand up, stand up. Give them a hand clap, first timers, second timers. Amen. We're glad to have you out with us, and we're glad to have your presence here with us. Uh, it was a blessed service we had in our Creole service, and, and now we're going forward with Rooted today. I just want to remind us about what Rooted is about, and I got my new cool Rooted hoodie today. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you give God a hand clap praise for that one. And those of you that love the Rooted hoodie I had before, we will have them available for you, of course, for a generous donation, but we will have them available very soon. Um, this one is uh, dear to my heart because of the logo, um, which it represents uh, what God gave us. And remind us the vision, what we're trying to do. Uh, and I'll have you guys repeat it. Rooted is about, first of all, revealing what? The word of God, who God is through his word. Revealing, you'll see that reveal through God who is through his word. And then what else do we do? What's next? Yes, rejoice, right? Rejoice. We rejoice. Make sure the cameraman get me right here. Rejoice 
We rejoice in community. God wants us to have joy in a world that's full of sadness, anguish, and pain. So we reveal his will for our lives through his word. Rejoice in community. That means building with one another. Third thing we want to do is reach out to the lost. We want to reach the world in any way possible through his will. Reach the world. And then the fourth thing we have to do is reproduce ourselves, create disciples. I would not be here if people weren't faithful to that reproduction. I would not be here if people did not reproduce themselves. So I have an obligation to the people that got me here to reproduce. I'm not going to keep you long today. I know we had a great and awesome worship, and I'm starting another series, and this series is on submission, so I'm just going to introduce it today, but I think it's a seminal series. Last time we were working on why is a Christian like a tree, uh, the aspen tree, and we started working on that by faith, but today I want to introduce us to the concept of submission. Um, but before that, uh, Brother Irving reminded me, our vision statement is to reveal, rejoice, reach, reproduce. Say that with me. Reveal, rejoice, reach, reproduce. One more time. Reveal, rejoice, reach, and reproduce. One more time, favor. And for the folks online to hear you. Reveal, rejoice, reach, and reproduce. But also, on top of that, we have our mission. And our mission is five things. Fivefold. And what are the five things? Number one, we want in our mission, I think there's something in the system. Just double check. All right, the mission, what we want to do is five things. God wants us to, okay, we're good. God wants us to give him our time. God wants us to give him our talent. God wants us to give him our treasure. God wants us to give him our temple. And God wants to give him the terrain. I'm going to say it again. God wants to give us our time. That's how we're going to accomplish this vision. Through our giving him our time. We're also going to give God our talent. We're also going to give God our treasure. We're also going to give God our temple. And we're going to give God the terrain. And I'll be teaching on these in the weeks that come, in the months that come, this whole year. I'm going to have a whole section on serial, uh, on the series. But before we even go into teaching on how we're going to give God, you cannot give God without submitting. And that's actually the beginning of this. To give God your time, to give God your talent, to give God your treasure. You can write that down, those of you who are budding out. To give God your temple and to give God the terrain, which is our environment, and allow him to control it, you have to first submit. And I want to go into what that means in a few minutes before we end today. Like I said, I'm not going to have a long word for you. I'm going to pull out my Bible phone and the book of James chapter 4. James chapter 4, verse 7, it says, Submit yourselves therefore to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. There are two messages in there. First, it says submit to God. And then the second message is what? He will flee from you. Who? The devil. So we're going to have two parts. But today we're going to work on the first part because that's the most important. If you don't submit to God, you can ignore the rest of the verse. There's no point in saying he will flee from you. The whole point of the devil being resisted is you submitting to God. Say that with me. Submit. Submit. If we don't submit to God. So I want to talk today in the next few minutes. Like I said, I'm not keeping you long. It's just an introduction on the four disciplines that are essential to submission. On the four disciplines that are essential to submission. Next time, I want to talk about, we'll go into people that submitted the Bible and how hard it was. In particular, Peter, and we'll talk about Jesus and others. But today, I just want to talk about four disciplines in a minute and a half and maybe two. About four disciplines that we can't ignore when we want to submit to God. Four disciplines. Discipline number one is the discipline of silence. The discipline of silence. As a parent, I now understand the importance of silence. <laughs> There's some times when you want to discipline your child and the child just wants to talk back to you and all you want to hear is silence. As a teacher, there are times when I want to put structure and shape into the lives of my students 
but I need them to be quiet. I need silence. In music, there are times when there's an actual note that is a silent note. Silence is an important discipline. Silence makes us reflect back on where we are and what we need to do. Silence allows God to speak to us. It is not by accident that we see prophet Elijah when he was in the midst of depression. God did not speak to him through a thunderous wind or a thunder or a storm, but God spoke to him through a still small voice in the midst of the silence. Silence is that time when you get away from the noise and you just let God speak to you and get away from the busy and get into the solitude. It's something that's hard for me and it's hard for a lot of people because the world is trying to get us to be busier and busier and busier and busier and busier where we don't have time for silence. But the discipline of submission requires silence because if you're too busy, then you won't hear God's voice. You'll miss it. I'm going to say it again. If you're too busy, you won't hear God's voice and you'll miss it. Discipline number two, and we'll come up with these again in the future. We'll see. Discipline number two is the discipline of waiting. Waiting is another discipline because we want to do everything hurriedly, hurry, hurriedly. And submitting to God means submitting our time, right? So if we submit time, we can't necessarily control what happens with time. We've got to understand that God is in charge of the time, not us. Mm. Submit our time means we have to have the discipline of waiting. We're always in a rush. Bible talks about Abraham and Sarah who waited 90 plus years to have their first child. That wasn't a rush. That was a long time, people. But even then, the Bible shows us that Abraham and Sarah did not wait. At that time, her name was Sarai. And she pressured her husband to use their handmaiden, to use their servant, maid worker, and have a child with him. That wasn't the will of God. She didn't wait. And she thought that doing that was submissive. It wasn't. And it resulted in a family clash. It resulted in tension in the home to the point that she put the woman out along with her child. When we don't wait, then we're not submissive. When we don't submit, we don't get God's best for us. It's not complicated. The discipline of silence, the discipline of submission. And I'm going to encourage you, go and go to our third discipline. Besides silence, waiting, the third one is the discipline of watching. When you submit to God, you've got to look for signs. You're looking for God to speak to you. What does this mean, Lord? Ask, inquire, watch, and pray combined together. So submission, a lot of times we want to just pray by ourselves, but it's watch and pray. I've written that. It's like anticipating any trial that may come your way, you're watching and praying and trusting in Jesus for how to respond through the trial. Let's say that again. That was good. Anticipating, watch that. You're, you're a Christian. You're going to face trial. As you anticipate a trial coming, you need to watch to see how you're going to get through that storm. Watch and pray. Lord, a storm is coming or I'm in the storm. How do I see my way out? I watch I open my spiritual eyes, I open my physical eyes, and I see what's happening to me. And last but not least, this is the most important, I'm going to end with this one today. You cannot submit to God unless you submit to the person that he's placed over you to help you. What that means is submission to God means God never leaves the people that he wants to grow without a mentor. I'm going to say that again. God never leaves the people that he wants to grow without a mentor. Not all our mentors are good. Not all of them are great. Elijah did not want to be a mentor. He did not have a prophet school. He ended up being alone. He complained to God about it. But that wasn't God's will. That was his will. When Elijah came along, he had to beg Elijah to keep him, to mentor him. I'm challenging you today, who is your mentor? I like to um, use an example of one of our good members here and disciples here. Brother Sam, even if I'm busy, he makes sure he gets to me. And I appreciate the fact that he's always looking for how God is going to use me to help him in making a decision. 
It doesn't matter if it's convenient for me or not. I want you to hear that. Sometimes he's calling me is really inconvenient. But who cares? Because he's not about to make a decision about his life that's going to end up wrong. So if I'm inconvenient, so what? Because at the end of the day, he knows what I want from him is the best for him. You follow me? And I think God's the same way. God wants the best for us, and we can't inconvenience him. So I encourage you for you to do like Sam. Use me as that resource, and also be a resource like that for someone else. People cannot be in complete following of God if you're not in submission to someone else as a leader. Every single leader in the Bible that was successful followed a submission pattern. Even when Moses wanted to go, God gave him his older brother just to help him and that support. But Moses' first and most powerful mentor was his father-in-law, Jethro. There's no leader in the Bible, even Jesus, who had the right to not have anybody be submit to him. He came along and he followed John the Baptist. John the Baptist stands up and tells Jesus to his face, I'm not worthy to be your mentor. I can't even lace your shoelaces. He said, nah, I'm setting an example for the disciples to follow. You need to be in submission to someone that wants to see the best for you in God. And if you're not in submission to that person right now, you're definitely not submitting to God. You're not. So I pray that each one of us, no matter how great or how lousy our mentor is, we find a way to make sure from that person we get the best we want from God. One of the lousiest mentors you're ever going to see in the Bible is Saul. Saul was supposed to be David's mentor. David was supposed to be king. How do you like to have a mentor that's trying to kill you? But even then, David said, I will not raise my hand against God's anointed. And from Saul, he was able to gleam enough to be able to rule and become king. If David could get something from a mentor that was trying to kill him, how much more do you need to be able to get from somebody God placed in your heart? There's no excuse. You need to grow, and growing involves submission. So the end, I'm going to review the four steps, the four essential disciplines. First, and I, this I'm preaching to myself more than you guys, is the discipline of silence. Sometimes the reason why God don't talk to us except in dreams is because that's the only time we shut up. Mm. Mm. The discipline of silence, God gives us dreams because he's like, you know what? Y'all, you're dreaming, you won't talk. And so I can talk to you. I know that's the case for me a lot of times. God speaks to me in dreams because I'm a big talker. I talk a lot. So he's like, I'm going to get Nate to shut up right now and put him to sleep. I'm not alone. He did the same thing to Peter. Put Peter to sleep. And Peter still was talking in a dream. We'll talk about that next time, about submission. Sometimes we don't submit. We won't even submit in the dream. But you have the discipline of silence. The discipline of waiting. Not your time, but his time. The discipline of watching and praying. And the discipline of mentorship. You need to be discipled and mentored. That's what we're, this is about. Rooted is about discipleship. It's about mentoring. It's about growing like the aspen tree so we can all become roots. I'm working right now on creating a small group study guide based on our sermons that we can work on together. But up until then, I hope you take these lessons and you grow with them. Let's stand to pray. Heavenly Father, we give you glory and honor and praise this afternoon. Not because we are worthy, but because you used your servant and our leading brother Irvin, and you spoke to us through the word. James chapter 4, verse 7, submit yourselves to God. That's our theme today. That's our desire for everyone's hearts. We ask that we be able to do this righteously and rightfully. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Before I give the benediction, I'm going to remind you the five ways to give. If you're not going to give in person um, to support the ministry, that's okay. You can always give using our cash app, which is dollar sign G-I-V-E, number two F-T-C-C, dollar sign G-I-V-E, forgive F-T-C-C. Second way you can give is through our PayPal, which is on our website, ftcctoday.com ftcctoday.com those letters third way you can give is through our Zelle and our Zelle is through the email address ftccfinance at gmail.com that's once again ftccfinance at gmail.com 
Fourth way you can give is text to give, which is so easy. Text to this number any amount you want to give. It'll take you to a landing page for either a debit card, credit card, or ACH. And as you're online listening, it's 914-292-7770. 914-292-770. Immediately records it. And if within two or three business days, it will show up on your account, whether it's a credit card, whether it's in a checking card, savings, doesn't matter. All easy. 914. And last but not least, those of you with the high level, sophisticated Google Android stuff, you can give through Google Pay at ftccfinance at gmail.com. ftccfinance at gmail.com. I thank you once again for coming out. Um, we said this month we want to start small groups. I think what I'm going to do is um, small group leaders. If you're interested in being a small group leader, please contact me, text me. Uh, if you're not interested and I contact you, please respond and put it in prayer because you're going to have to try to do a positive. But I think God wants us to grow, and that's what I'm going to do. So uh, let's focus on that. Put it in prayer. I'm going to pray too, so I don't make a decision based on flesh, but I make a decision based on God. Remember again, our vision is to reveal, rejoice, reach, and reproduce. Say it again. Reveal, rejoice, reach, and reproduce. May the grace of God that surpass all hearts and knowledge. Guard and guard our hearts. Guard and guard our minds. In Jesus' name, pray. Amen. Go Thanks for tuning in to Rooted. You can help support this ministry by logging on to ftcctoday.com and clicking on the donate button. Please help us share and spread the gospel by subscribing to this channel and clicking on the share and like button. See you next time.